What's good, y'all? It's your boy Havoc. Final round. It's going down this weekend. We got Usyk versus Joshua. The rematch. I'm excited for this one. Maybe whoever the winner is, we just might get undisputed with Fury. I know people are saying, well, Fury's retired. BS. I don't buy it. I don't believe it. We know how many times Fury has came out of retirement. We know he's a trickster. We know he's the Gypsy King. So I, I wouldn't. I think he's got something up his sleeve with all this retirement stuff. But anyhow, that's talk for another day. We got the rematch coming up. Will Joshua avenge his loss? Will he find redemption? Can he do what he didn't do in the first fight? And I'm going to make my prediction. I'm going to talk about some of the fight week workouts and interviews. And I heed warning. I heed warning when I say this. Look. When we look at these fight week interviews and workouts, we can't read too much into them sometimes. But they can give us some cues. They can be cues and red flags or give us insight to where the fighters are psychologically and physically. They can. If, they, if there's enough hints, you can piece the puzzle together. Like the first fight. For me personally, I could not go with Joshua. I picked Usyk for the first fight. I was 50-50 most of the time up in, up until the fight, 50-50. I thought that Joshua had a good chance to win if he went in there, put pressure, cut off the ring, used his weight against Usyk and acted like a heavyweight. I thought he had a good chance at winning, but right before the fight, he started, there were some red flags. Joshua was talking about he was going to try and sit in the center of the ring and outbox Usyk. There was many cues that he was going to attempt to do that. And when I figured that out, or when I heard some of the things he was saying, and when I saw him coming in very slim into the fight weight-wise, I was like, nope, can't go with Joshua. Can't go with him. Not if that's his game plan. And I chose Usyk. But I have a rule of thumb here for the rematch, okay? I cannot pick against the high IQ technical and very skilled fighter in the rematch. I never do. I could be wrong for this one, but I'm not going to do it because usually the high IQ guy, the very skilled boxer in a rematch from the first matchup usually does a lot better. He downloads. If you give a high IQ guy 12 rounds He's downloaded your program and he's figured you out. He's going to come in very confident in the second fight and he's going to dismantle you. You saw this in some Mayweather fights. You saw this with Roy Jones. You saw this with Andre Ward versus Sergey Kovalev. Absolutely deconstructed Kovalev and broke him down. Made him a shell of himself. So I think the same thing, and that's why I got to pick Usyk. I think the same thing is going to happen probably worse. He's going to get outboxed. And there's a good chance, I believe, there's going to be a KO. When, I would say somewhere from 6 to 8. Or 6 to 12. I'm sorry. I'm not saying Anthony Joshua doesn't stand a chance, you guys. I'm not sleeping on Joshua completely. This is a very interesting matchup. Considering that what happens if Anthony Joshua does come in very physically, very physical, very aggressive, using his weight, getting in the clinch, leaning on Usyk. You know, with the dog set mentality. Is it possible? I think it, it you know, I think there's a possibility. Do I think it's going to happen? No. Now, I hear a lot of people saying that the only way Joshua can win is just being aggressive. And obviously, that's part of the key. But a lot of people are saying, well, Anthony Joshua can't try and outbox Usyk. He can't try and outbox Usyk. Well, yes, in a certain context, that is true. He can't sit in the middle of the ring and try and outbox Usyk. But here's the scary thing for Anthony Joshua. If he's going to win this fight, he's going to have to outbox Usyk. Now, I know it sounds like I'm contradicting myself. But let's change up the context here. People really forget that pressure fighting requires skills. 
Joshua is not a brawler, first of all. He's not going to go in there and fight like Chisora. And second of all, brawling doesn't necessarily require skill. And even if Joshua did go in there and try to brawl and just be physically aggressive, he'd probably still get outboxed. Maybe even worse. He might run into left hands all night. He has to pressure fight. He has to cut off the ring. Yes, and to do that, you have to have good lateral movement. You have to have good footwork. You have to have a good understanding of positioning in the ring. You have to have good punch selections for when you're cutting your opponent off, when he's trying to escape. You have to be able to control distance with your jab, your lead hand. One of the most important weapons as a pressure fighter is, guess what? Your jab. Look at Errol Spence. What is his best weapon as a pressure fighter? The jab. Triple G, pressure fighter, best weapon, the jab. Two current examples of pressure fighter. Roman Gonzalez, the jab, very good jab. You have to have a jab as a pressure fighter to control your opponent, to disrupt his timing, his rhythm. If you ain't got no jab as a pressure fighter, I, I don't know what you're going to do. You're not going to be able to, and especially against a guy like Usyk, who's constantly moving, head movement, feints, ducking, lead hand play, constantly distracting you. To be a pressure fighter requires skills and defensive skills as well. People look at Julio Cesar Chavez and they don't understand how good his defense was considering he was constantly coming forward. Very subtle head movement, very subtle pairing skills that people don't give him enough credit for pressure and triple g same the same thing in his prime very subtle defensive skills it requires skills to be a pressure fighter i don't think robert garcia is going to be able to teach that in one camp we have the deontay wilder syndrome here okay where he switches trainers and think that's think that's going to change his life and it's not now do i think robert garcia will be an honest word in the corner okay if joshua was not being aggressive enough yes i think that's the good thing but kraken didn't do that for this first fight so understandable why he got left behind but you know at the end of the day i don't think garcia can teach joshua too many things new technically in one training camp it takes time to acclimate to your fighter and then second of all you know all well second all he can do is just tell him to you know tell him the truth in the corner if he's falling behind or if he needs to be more aggressive but at the end of the day anthony joshua it's up to him it's him himself in the ring nobody else and he's gonna have to make the decision when it comes down to it when he gets cracked with the left hand if he's gonna go into the fire and he's gonna test Usyk. I just don't think that we're going to see Anthony Joshua turn into this very physically aggressive fighter, you know, like Derek Chisora or Fury against Wilder, where he's leaning on him, grappling with him in the clinch. Obviously, I saw Joshua was working on some wrestling in his training camp, but that, that's, once again, it's one training camp. I don't think he's going to be able to do this for the, for the next fight. But I'll say this, I think if Joshua can get down to the body against Usyk, you know, maybe even get a cut. He did batter Usyk's face pretty good in the first fight. Maybe cause a cut that'll cause a lot of problems. I don't know if that cut came from a headbutt, I can't recall. But, you know, if Joshua can cut Usyk or if he can beat him down to the body early in the fight and not wait and get after it, he could come out on top. He has a chance, but he, I think he's going to have to really take chances in the first six rounds. And then it's going to be up to him to finish the fight. If Usyk's still in there, which is, I mean, Usyk's a warrior. He's not going to go anywhere if you crack him. You know, you're going to have to put his lights out to make that dude give up. And if you don't, you better be there for the second half of the fight. So I hope AJ's in shape. And one of the scary things I saw with this 
pre-workout before the fight. And the interview right after he got done working out, hitting mitts, and he wasn't even going hard. He was only going like 60%, 50%. I don't know. Maybe not even that. Kind of going through the motions, breaking a sweat. But when he grabbed the mic for the interview, he sounded very winded. That's a little bit of a red flag to me. You're hitting the mitts. You're not even hitting them hard. I don't know what this is. I don't know if it's nerves that are getting to him. But if he's nervous at this little pre-week workout before the fight what the hell you think is gonna happen when the the bright lights come on and this is nationally televised but he seemed winded he seemed winded that's a little bit concerning for me and if he's not in the perfect shape that he is supposed to be against the Usyk then he has six rounds to get it done it's, it's six, you go for it, you leave it out on the table, or you, you're not going to win. Go for broke within six rounds if you're not in shape for this guy. Take the chance. You might get knocked out, but you, you cannot go into this fight and do the same thing you did in the first fight. Even if he did, he's not going to skate out of it this time because Usyk will get the KO. I think Usyk's going to outbox him. Another interesting thing. And here's another thing I didn't like about Josh, what he said in one of the interviews. Oh, if Usyk was an orthodox stanced fighter, he would have beat him. I don't even understand what that means by Josh. What is he saying? What does that even mean? If if Usyk was a right-handed fighter, he would have beat him. Well, be careful what you wish for because we saw in Usyk's workout. He was shadow boxing in the orthodox stance. Now, who knows? Once again, that's why I say you can't read into these, these workouts and interviews before the fight, right before the fight, all the time. But who knows? Be careful what you wish for because what happens if Usyk comes out in the orthodox stance? Now, we know Usyk knew there was a rematch clause. He knew he was going to have to go through the fire twice to get past Joshua. Would it be crazy to think if... He started training in the orthodox stance for the rematch. Now, I don't think he's going to do it personally because, I look, I, I haven't followed all of Usyk's career. I don't know if he's ever came out in the orthodox stance and started boxing. I'm not aware. If, if anybody is, let me know. And if he hasn't, it makes it very hard for me to believe he's going to come out and try to box Anthony Joshua in the orthodox stance. But I'm not going to say it's impossible. I'm not going to put it past him. That Usyk wouldn't try something crazy. He seems like a crazy dude. And I mean, if he's worked on it all camp, or maybe this is something he's been working on behind the scenes, who knows? But I kind of like it. I like the idea of it. Very risky, very dangerous. But I like the idea. Maybe he's trying to work some different angles. He knows Anthony Joshua is going to come out. Maybe it's not even so much about getting off offensively but opening up different points of exit strategies out of the corner and off the ropes, pivot points from the orthodox stance. And he can switch that up at will. He can go to southpaw, he's going to go to orthodox and work defensively and try to pivot out of the corner and the ropes and be a little bit more unpredictable at an extra dimension. Or maybe he's just playing mind games. Or maybe he's just warming up in the orthodox stance. I have no, no idea. We don't know. But pay attention to that. It could be something. But, I mean, it could come back to haunt Anthony Joshua for saying that. If Usyk was in the orthodox stance, I would have beat him. Well, if he comes out in the orthodox stance and beats Anthony Joshua, that's going to be very embarrassing. Now, I think this is do or die for Anthony Joshua. I'm not saying his career will be absolutely over. I'm not saying there still won't be big fights with Fury or Deontay Wilder uh, or some other fights. But uh, I think those will still be there. People will still want to see it. I still want to see those fights. I don't care if Anthony Joshua loses. You never know. Especially if it's up, uh, if he takes an L and he goes up against Anthony Joshua. I would love to see that matchup. I don't think it's completely over, but I think his path to being a champion again will probably be over. Usyk can do something very special here. 
undisputed, possibly unified heavyweight champ, okay, and then become possibly undisputed later on in two divisions, cruiserweight to heavyweight, and that's very difficult to do, very difficult to do, to jump up from cruiserweight and go to heavyweight and be undisputed in both. It's a possibility, and I'm telling you, I wouldn't sleep on Usyk. If he finds a way to get past Anthony Joshua again, I would not sleep on him against Fury. To me, that I'm getting close to a 50-50 fight. I am. I'd lean towards Fury because Fury can box in so many ways and he's he's gigantic. But I don't think Fury's ever faced someone like Usyk with the footwork and the speed, the intelligence. But... Once again, let's not get too far ahead of ourselves. I got Anthony Joshua taking an L in this one. I think he gets KO'd. I'm not going to put my money on Anthony Joshua. I'm not putting it past him that he can win. I know Anthony Joshua is very talented. I know he has the capability. But I'm not putting my money on a psychology. And one thing that Roy Jones said, he was like, he's got a new podcast or YouTube show, something like that where he's with Antonio Tarver and Polly Malinaji. And he said something very interesting. Because one of the things I always wonder was like, Anthony Joshua has shown dog before. I saw it against Klitschko. He gets back up, then he knocks Klitschko out. I just didn't understand. He had so much dog in him in that fight. But then with the Ruiz fight, he looked totally out of it. He looked psychologically broken. Even, even though he run the, won the rematch, he looked hesitant. He looks hesitant in most of his fight fights. He doesn't look as confident. Doesn't look like he wants to pull the trigger. He's lost with his identity in boxing, stylistically. He's trying to slim down. I hate that. I think Anthony Joshua should have kept his weight and his muscles. I know a lot of people... Are saying he gets winded because he has too much muscles. Well, he got winded when he slimmed down for Usyk. Still got winded. It's like, dude, do what got you to the dance. That's what you do, Anthony Joshua. If you're a freaking bodybuilder boxer, then just be a bodybuilder boxer. All right? But I like Anthony Joshua when he's dieseled up. I mean, he's obviously always going to be a big dude, ripped up. But I like him when he's ripped up, bulked up. Because he seems to be more confident and his punches look more sharp, in my opinion. But that's just me. He got winded anyway. He slimmed down for the fight and he got winded anyway. I hope Anthony Joshua comes in bigger. I hope he comes in the sixth round and he goes for broke. But I hope, here's the thing once again, he has to outbox Usyk. There's no getting around it. There's no getting around it. To win this fight, Us or Joshua has to outbox Usyk. There ain't no three ways about it. It just can't be in the center of the ring. He has to do it coming forward. I liked in his one of the pros of his pre-fight uh, workout was that I saw that it looks like he's going to be cutting off the ring. It's like he's been working on his lateral movement. It's not pretty. It's not perfect. I see some flaws with his footwork and cutting off the ring in that 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 pre-fight workout. But I like the idea. Look, it's not going to be perfect. He's going to have to take a few to give a few. Maybe to give one good one. But if Anthony Joshua goes to the body, he cuts the ring off, you know, he gets Usyk in the clinch and wrestles with him, wears him down, he has a chance to win. There's no doubt and that's the factor. That's what a lot of people are interested to see in this fight. Can Usyk use his size? Can he use his size? Can he act like the heavyweight? And a lot of people think he can and win. I don't. I don't. The only thing I would say for Usyk, I don't like the fact that he's putting on more weight. I I, I just don't get this whole weight thing in boxing. Usyk came in there undersized and he was able to outbox Anthony Joshua. He was able to completely outbox Anthony Joshua. Why are you changing it up? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. 
Williams. Like when Deontay Wilder decided to bulk up against Fury. Like that was going to do anything. Dude, you've been knocking people out at like 215, 220. Stay there. Why would you want to carry extra extra weight? That's what makes you explosive and powerful. Is that you have a slim frame and you have very you have speed on your punches. So I, I'm a little bit concerned for that with Usyk, but honestly, I just think I, I cannot pick Joshua. I think Usyk is a dog. I think he's a warrior. I think he's fighting for his country. He's more skilled. He's more technical. He has a high IQ. And I think at the end of the day, once Joshua gets popped in the mouth again, he's going to revert back to who he is. But once again, Roy Jones said something very interesting that I forgot to note. I got a, I got away from myself there. But I like what Roy Jones said. He said one of the reasons Anthony Joshua was able to get up against Klitschko and have confidence and you got to see a little dog in him is because he used to spar with Klitschko all the time. He was like a brother to him. And that would that made perfect sense because because he spent so many rounds with Klitschko sparring, he knew how to handle that situation. He wasn't in unfamiliar territory. He's been there with Klitschko. Maybe not not in the bright lights, but he's been there. He knows Klitschko, so he had that confidence to get back up and win the fight. But with Andy Ruiz, he didn't have that. He didn't spar against Andy Ruiz. He knew nothing about Andy Ruiz. And when he got put down, he was it was like a deer in headlights. He didn't know what to do. And that was a great point by Roy Jones. And even though Anthony Joshua has shared the ring with Usyk, and I think that can help, I, I don't think we've seen everything from Usyk and I don't think he really pressed on the gas pedal as much as he could have early on in that fight, being Usyk. So that's very concerning for Anthony Joshua. And when you think about the Andy Ruiz matchup, it wasn't that impressive of, of a victory. And Andy Ruiz wasn't even in shape. He wasn't even in shape. And he just kind of eked by. I shouldn't say ETH, but it was just like, it wasn't an unprecedented performance in my opinion. So I don't think Anthony Joshua was going to rediscover himself. And I, I just think all it's going to take is one moment to rattle him. And it seems like he's getting chinny. Rock him one time and I think he's going to revert right back to where he is. He's going to get nervous. He's going to do that laugh he does. That nervous smile, and he's gonna be Anthony Joshua, and he's gonna fold under the pressure. I like. I still think there's pressure. He may not have the belts, but I still think Anthony Joshua feels the pressure. And unfortunately, he still has a lot of fans that think he's great, that think he's the win, and maybe he is. But I, I just don't see it. I think he's more interested in being a celebrity. This dude Usyk, I think he's willing to die in the ring. He's a crusader. This is what he does. He's not doing it solely for money or fame. He's a savage. So I got Usyk winning the fight. Let me know who you got winning the fight. Comment down below. Like the video. Subscribe if you're new. Cheers to my subscribers. Let's keep building this thing. It's going to be a fun weekend of boxing. Until another peace.